My name's Emily Brown. I am the Patient Education Content and Project Manager here at Patient Advocate Foundation. I have been with the company for six and a half years now. Um, I spent five of those years working one-on-one -on -one with patients as a clinical case manager. And my role was to help folks navigate the health insurance world and the health system in general. So um, a big part of that does include health insurance denials and appeals. Um, PAF is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and we offer, like I mentioned, case management services as well as financial aid to Americans who have chronic and critical illnesses. Uh, and since we were founded in 1996, we have served over 1.3 million patients um, and helped them navigate the healthcare system. So we can go ahead and jump in to the topic now that we've kind of done a, done a broad overview. Um, really, the number one question is, what does it mean to receive a health insurance denial? Um, at PAF, we try to kind of reframe the way that people think about their health insurance. So try thinking of your health insurance at more like a business deal uh, where you and your insurance company have entered into a contract and your plan language, meaning the actual benefits that you pay for and that your insurance company has said they will provide in, in the policy, um, that can almost be viewed as a contract between you and the insurance company. So when your insurance company decides to deny care, uh, they are essentially saying that the service you're requesting or the care that you've received is outside of the contract as they interpret it. So this generally translates to them not paying for that care or not approving the prior authorization say that your insurer or that your provider may have submitted on your behalf. So when you file an appeal, you're effectively do filing a contract dispute. So you're saying, I don't agree with the decision that you've made and how you've interpreted the contract that we have together and you're asking the insurance company to reconsider their decision to deny you. So another big question is, how do you know that you are denied? Um, and the way that you discover that the care that you're seeking won't be covered depends on what is being denied. So there are two overarching uh, kind of categories that you can put denials into, one of which is a pre-service denial and one is a post-service denial. So pretty self-explanatory if you think about it, but um, pre-service denials are going to be any pre-authorization denials uh, that happen as a result of your provider's office submitting a pre-authorization and then your insurance company denying that authorization saying we don't think that um, you need this care or that it's beneficial for you. And this can be for any kind of medication. It can be for testing, procedures, surgery, lab work, um, anything that your insurance company has said requires a prior authorization can also receive a denial. So post-service denials are going to be any anything that is denied after the service is completed. So generally medications are not post-service denials because typically um, you would not have received the medication prior to uh, your insurance company paying for it. So if you have a pre-service denial, you should receive a written letter from your insurance company um, responding to that pre-authorization and in the letter you will see the request the service that was requested whether again that was a medication or um, a procedure or a test as well as the reason for the denial 
Um, so in an ideal world, you would receive that letter before you found out any other way, whether that's standing in the line at the pharmacy where you learn that you have to pay full price because your insurance didn't pay, or whether you got a phone call from your provider's office uh, because they found out first. But as a general rule, you should receive a letter from your insurance company if they deny a prior authorization, and your doctor should also receive a copy of that letter. So if you have a post-service denial, you will see the denial reflected on your explanation of benefits, often called an EOB, which is generated after every healthcare interaction. So every time you go to the doctor, every time you get lab work, every time you have a procedure, that healthcare interaction will generate a, an explanation of benefits document. That document will reflect what the care that was given, the amount the insurance company paid or didn't pay, the amount you are responsible for, and it will also note if there are any uh, denial reasons. So it'll note the codes explaining why, if there was a denial, why it was denied. Um, and typically the EOBs can are sent in the mail or you can access them on your health insurance company's web portal or member portal if they have that available online. Um, whether or not the denial is pre-service or post-service, the documents should explain your appeal rights, how the process works, uh, where the appeal should be sent once you're ready to file, and the timeline for submitting your appeal. So now you know you were denied, now let's dive into why you were denied. So first, it's important to understand that there may be situations that feel like denials, but actually aren't. Um, there may be situations where your insurance company isn't contributing towards the cost of your care, uh, but it could be something as simple as an administrative issue. Um, for example, you may receive a bill from your provider and it looks like your insurance company hasn't paid anything. Um, but at that point, you can kind of find out pretty quickly. Maybe your doctor's office hasn't yet submitted the claim or maybe your insurance company just hasn't paid it yet or processed it. So you may have already gotten a bill and it looks like you owe everything because there was no insurance payment, but really it just takes some time. Sometimes there's backlog or um, whatever reason it hasn't been paid at that time. Um, or there's a chance that when you're going to pick up your medication, your pharmacy may not have the most up-to-date information. So you may have switched plans and forgot to tell your pharmacy that you got new insurance. So every time you receive new uh, insurance cards in the mail, just drop them off or you know, hand them to the pharmacist, hand them to your doctor's office, just to make sure that everyone has the most up-to-date information and you're not getting uh, the extra hassle of feeling like you have a denial if you don't actually. Um, another, another chance could be that there might be typos. We're dealing with humans here. So lots of times errors can be made, uh, typos can be made. So uh, sometimes the documentation might not line up. They send the wrong records. It happens, we're human, things happen. So um, sometimes those things are definitely administrative issues that uh, are a hassle, but can typically be easily fixed. Sometimes as well, it may feel like insurance isn't uh, covering anything towards the cost of your care because you may owe a large amount. You could have uh, a deductible, which again is the amount that you are required to pay before your insurance company starts to pay. Um, you may have not reached your deductible yet. You get a large bill, you think that the insurance company hasn't covered anything or that they may have denied your care, when in fact you just have not met your deductible yet. So. Another instance might be if you have a high coinsurance, if you owe a lot towards the cost of a procedure uh, or treatment or service. 
that's not a true denial and neither is not meeting your deductible. So those instances cannot be appealed and they're simply just part of the design of your plan. So going back to true denials, the why of your denial depends on what was denied. So the reason for the denial depends on whether you were denied for a procedure or testing or a medication. So a procedure could be denied maybe because it's not a covered benefit, meaning it's not, it wasn't ever outlined in your contract to be something that your insurance company would pay for. Or maybe your provider is out of network and your health insurance plan doesn't offer out of network benefits. Um, or maybe the treatment required pre-approval and your health provider didn't get that pre-approval. Um, there could be several instances there with procedures why that, why you get a denial. In terms of medications, there could be limits on the number of pills that you're allowed to have per month per the, per your policy, or it could be a step therapy issue where you are required to try cheaper medications before your insurance company will pay for more expensive medications or specialty medications. Or maybe your plan only covers generic, so any of those uh, brand name drugs aren't gonna be paid for. Um, something else that may happen that would trigger a denial would be if a medication is off formulary. Um, and that may be something that some of you folks may be seeing um, with the new uh, G-Pant drugs that they're coming out with that the FDA has just approved. Um, those are new to the market. So there's an, a chance that your health insurance company has not updated their formulary or their approved drug list to include those new drugs. So if, you, if your provider writes a prescription for those new drugs, you might get a denial simply because the, uh, your health plan's drug list hasn't yet been approved or hasn't yet been updated, excuse me. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you do get denied for one of those medications, it might just be that your insurance company hasn't yet approved or updated that listing and um, that could happen in, in a bit. So, all right, now we know what denials are, we know how to recognize them and we know why they happen. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about what actions you need to uh, move forward with once you determine that you do have a true denial. So the first step is to investigate what exactly happened. Um, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes a denial could be as simple as a misspelling. Uh, it could be a transposed ID number someone could have written your birthday down as 1987 instead of 1978. And what is being submitted doesn't match what your insurance company has on file for you. Therefore, it automatically triggers a denial. Um, if you realize that the denial has to do with something that your doctor's office submitted, just kindly ask them to update the claim or the pre-authorization and resubmit. And um, typically that is handled much quicker. Uh, anything that's, any denial that comes from an administrative issue are, is handled much more easily and a lot faster. And typically that has to be done by your provider's office. Um, and that can typically be paid quickly upon correct information being received by your insurance company. But if you do some digging and you find that you aren't sure why the denial happened or you don't understand why the claim was denied, call your health plan and ask. And if you take anything from this presentation, this is what I want you to take. When you call your insurance company, take notes. It is imperative imperative when you call your insurance company or even your doctor's office to discuss a denial that you write down who you spoke with, the date and time you spoke with them, a summary of the call, and 
any pertinent information that was given to you during the phone call. Um, Patient Advocate Foundation has a handy communication log you can use when you're talking to your health insurance company or your provider's office um, just to kind of keep track of things. And that's located on our website under the Migraine Matters section of our site. Um, I have won appeals just by quoting back what a health insurance company representative representative misadvised. So it's important um, to make sure that you are really keeping track of what was told to you by the representatives at your insurance company. So after you figure out the reason for de your denial, make sure you understand the process and the timeline for appealing. Uh, again, this information should be on the denial letter or the explanation of benefits that you receive. Um, and the timelines, just like the process overall, is plan specific. I have seen insurance companies give as little as 10 days to file an appeal. And I've also seen two years. So it is plan specific. So it's important to uh, be cognizant of that. And again, that's on your explanation of benefits. If it's a post-service denial or on a denial it'll denial letter that you'll receive if it's a pre-service denial. Um, and it's also important to note that when you're calculating those dates, so you'll the document you'll receive will say that you have to file uh, the appeal within 180 days of receiving the denial letter. So it's important to note that when you're trying to calculate calculate those dates, uh, that you do not calculate that from the date you received the letter or the date of service if it's a if you've already received care you need to calculate the date it's due based on the date of the letter or the date on the explanation of benefits so whatever is written and or typed on the document you receive about your denial is the date you need to calculate from um, so next, you're gonna to wanna to join forces with your provider. And it's important that when you call them to kind of discuss more about what's going on, ask them to place your account on hold um, as long as they do the billing in-house because you don't wanna be paying uh, for care that you don't truly owe for. Uh, so it's nice if they are able to put your account on hold and not move forward with you know any kind of collections or anything like that while you're going through the process of appeals because it can sometimes be a long process so it's nice if you're able to ask them if they can just hold your account while you're trying to sort things out with the insurance company as well a lot of offices will complete appeals on behalf of their patients so you want to make sure that you double check with them and figure out kind of coordinate who's going to be filing who's sending what uh, because it can get confusing and duplicative if you're, you and your provider's office are both sending information uh, and you don't want to have anything make your appeal more confusing. You want to make it as easy and as clear as possible when you're filing uh, the, with your insurance company. If the insurance, uh, excuse me, if your provider is not filing on your behalf, you still need to work with the office to get medical records, to get any kind of important documents like office visit notes, um, lab work, current testing, uh, just so that you can send that with your appeal. And you should also request of your doctor that they send you a right for you or ask nicely, <laughs> um, a letter of medical necessity. And this is important because it gives your doctor or your provider the opportunity to say in his or her own words why they feel you need the medication or testing or procedure that they've prescribed. They're able to provide a history of your illness or of your migraine disease they're able to list other diagnoses that you have that could um, matter in terms of what of your care path uh, as well 
they're going to put any kind of treatments that you've previously tried, whether that's acute or preventative or uh, medically or holistically. They're going to need to include just your treatment history in general and your the history of your illness as well. Um, in addition to that, it's good if you can connect with your provider to see if they have any kind of journal articles or medical articles that you could send with your appeal packet just to help bolster your case and to really make, uh, make a case for why uh, it's, it's important that you get access to what they've prescribed. So once you've connected with the office and received the pertinent medical records and the letter of medical necessity, you can begin to write your appeal letter. Um, and in the letter, there are several things that you want to make sure that you uh, specifically spell out. You want to make sure that you include the patient's name and contact information if there's any questions. Uh, the policy holder name, if for instance, the patient is not the policy holder. So if you're on your spouse's inf uh, insurance, for example, they need their name needs to also be on the letter as well as your policy number you need to reference the date on the eob or on the appeal letter or the denial letter excuse me you need to give detailed information about what was denied uh, and the stated reason that was given you need to provide your doctor or provider's contact information and name and then you need to go into the argument about why you feel the care is necessary and why it should be covered. So present your facts, state why you think the policy actually does cover the care that's been prescribed and denied. So think about that again as a contract. We're thinking about our insurance policy as a contract. So you can feel free to quote specific instances where you think, uh, you know, back up your case of what, why it should be uh, approved. As well, you can insert quotes from your provider's letter of medical necessity, insert quotes from any medical articles or journal articles that support your case. Um, and when you are closing out your letter, try to restate in a different way what you're asking for and what you want the insurance company to do. So whether that's overturning the denial or approving the prior authorization for medication, make sure there is no question about what you were asking the insurance company to do. Um, and just another tip, it's so easy to get wrapped up in how upsetting it is to receive an, a denial from your insurance company. Um, but again, just try to think of this situation as a business deal. It is not personal from your insurance company's perspective. It feels personal. It feels like they're out to get you or they're attacking you, um, but you will likely get better results if in your letter you remain factual and you try to keep emotion out as best as possible. Um, I want to mention as well, when you're writing this letter, Patient Advocate Foundation has written sample appeal letters. We, can, we have some templates on our website. Again, that can be found on the Migraine Matter section of our PAF website. Those are listed um, there and there is a pre-service denial appeal letter and a post-service denial. It's, I think it's called a claim denial. It's the same thing. Um, so those are there for you to review. There's also some documents about just tips for appealing um, some of the things I've gone over today. So if you're in this situation, you can always refer to our website to get some of those good educational materials to help guide you in the process of um, filing your appeal. So along with the letter that you write, the letter of medical necessity you get from your doctor, the medical journal articles that your doctor helps you locate um, or you locate yourself. Be sure that you send a copy of the denial letter or the EOB that actually states the denial on it, um, just so that's included and in your the reviewer of your appeal doesn't have to do a lot of digging. 
Um, as well, as I mentioned before, the denial letter or the EOB should tell you where to send the appeal. So some insurance companies request that the appeal is sent in the mail. And if that's the case, I recommend sending certified or with tracking. Uh, some want you to send via fax, and if that's the case, make sure you get a fax confirmation. And some request that you send uh, the appeal through the member portal. So just again, make sure if that's the case and you're uploading your appeal documents online, you're getting some sort of confirmation that the appeal documents have been received. Um, again, if you're sending by mail, make sure that you keep copies of everything that you've sent just for your own records uh, and just so that you can, again, stay organized and keep track of what has been communicated to them. Um, you should receive correspondence from your insurance company that your appeal has been received within about two weeks. If you don't get any kind of confirmation or you haven't heard anything back from your insurance company about whether or not your documentation and your appeal has been received, you can absolutely reach out to them, ask for the appeals department, um, and that number is typically found on the back of your member ID card. Um, it's usually just a customer service line. You can call just to check the status, make sure it's in the right department and that it's being processed uh, according to the the plan that's set up in your insurance policy. And there is not a standard time frame for when you should hear back from a an insurance appeal that you filed. Uh, that should typically be in your insurance policy and again that's specific per the plan that you have. As a general rule, pre-service denials, so those pre-authorization denials are going to be quicker in terms of receiving a decision back than if you've already received the service. Uh, and for some reason, if, an insur if your insurance company is gonna take longer than they typically would uh, for making your decision, typically they will send some sort of documentation, usually a letter to let you know, hey, we're gonna be taking a little bit longer. Here's the reason for the delay. Once you've received your decision, your decision on your appeal, you will get a formal letter in the mail um, or uploaded to your member portal. And if you haven't received a letter, um, again, you can call your customer service number and the representative there should be able to give you a status update. If you're approved, wonderful. That's exactly what we were hoping for. And you can call your provider's office, schedule your appointments, go to the pharmacy, get your medication. Um, but if you are denied, keep trying. There are typically two to three levels of appeal, if not more, uh, to an insurance plan. And if you're initially denied, that doesn't mean that you will never have access to the medication or you'll never have access to uh, the lab work or testing that your doctor has prescribed. It just means that uh, maybe you need to regroup. Maybe there have been other symptoms that you've been experiencing that you weren't when you initially sent your appeal. Or maybe you've had new testing that is uh, updated and you can provide extra lab results that might be more telling. Or uh, maybe there was something missing. Maybe your doctor wasn't able to write a letter of medical necessity, but in the meantime, you've gotten one. So try again, the, the denial letter that you receive from the appeal denial will give you details about how to move forward. So they will say, um, again, where the appeal needs to be sent. Sometimes it's not the same place you sent the first appeal. So that information should be on the letter as well as any other pertinent information you need to know about the appeal and a time frame for when, uh, the, when the deadline is for a filing. And same thing, that's not always the same time frame as your initial appeal. So be sure you're paying attention to time frames um, and you don't lose an opportunity to appeal because you missed the deadline. 
I will say sometimes there are uh, special circumstances. So if you're in the hospital for an extended amount of time or you're away from home for an extended amount of time and didn't ever see the denial letter, um, there are opportunities to uh, make your case and for exceptions to be made by your insurance company when um, kind of extenuating circumstances happen. And another thing I'll leave you with is just try not to get discouraged. Again, I know it's a scary process. It doesn't feel good when, uh, you know, your doctor has prescribed this. They're saying, I really think this will help in your journey. This will help with your care. And then it feels kind of like a slap in the face when the insurance company doesn't want to cover that or it isn't covered under your plan. Um, it's easy to get frustrated. But um, just remember that going through the appeals process is just part of advocating for the care that you deserve. Um, so I know I threw a lot at you today, but I want to mention to you as well, if you need help managing this process, there are resources. Uh, typically, there are uh, people who can assist with filing appeals for uh, medical services through your state's Department of Insurance, as well as sometimes states have ombudsman programs that can be uh, utilized to help file the appeals. Um, and as well, Patient Advocate Foundation has case management services that uh, are free of charge to, uh, to patients, caregivers, and providers. And those case managers help one-on-one -on -one for free uh, to help navigate the health insurance appeals process and to help file appeals. And you're able to contact uh, Patient Advocate Foundation Case Management at 866-688-3625. And that phone line is dedicated to patients who have headache and migraine diseases. Um, as well, you can visit migraine.pafcareline.org and you can fill out a uh, online request for help for services if you need help with an insurance denial. 